story starts with a small town with few houses, and on the walls there are few hoardings and posters which say stop vampire massacres. Government for vampire countermeasures. Seems like there's some vampire stuff going on in the town. Around a corner three gangster looking men ask a kid, yo kid, where's the priest? To which the kid replies shockingly, you're gangsters, right? Leave us alone, kids say. Looks like these men were searching for the priest. One of the men then grabs a kid from her hair and says that they were here because their construction has been delayed because of the people in the town. And says, we won't go easy on you just because you're orphans. Call the priest now. Suddenly a woman with a mask on her face enters the scene and tries to throw a hot water bucket in their face. But the gangster looking men grab her and ask her, what the hell are you trying to do, miss? And tries to remove her mask asking let's see who's behind this mask. Trying to break through his hand, the masked woman says, What do you expect us to do after leaving our own house? The woman looks young by her physique. When all this was going on kids were shouting, Leave our Nuna alone. But then arrives a man. Young, strong-looking man with red hair, cigarettes in his hand and phone on the other. Something was different about this man from his appearance. Sound comes from behind the man says, Excuse me, I was hoping I could get some directions. Gangster-looking men turn around and take a glance at the man asking, who the heck are you? Man asks for directions to the police station in the neighborhood. One of the men then says that don't you see we're busy now. Another man says go find yourself. Red hair man says, aw, oh, okay. While the red haired man was walking he hears the gangsters say, hey bitch, bring out the priest. And listening to this the red haired man stops and murmurs, but you know, your language is quite crude. As he says this he goes near the gangster man and offers him a few restaurant names which sell good beans and rice then one of the gangster men murmurs something into the main guy's ear. And they start going away saying they'll come next week looking for the priest. The kids then relax and start talking among themselves. The woman asks them, were you scared? One says yes, another shows anger as if she was going to beat them, which was definitely not the case. The red hair man then starts to go away as he walks away the woman asks him, can I show you the way to the police station? But he denies, saying he already knew it. He says he lived there since he was 10 years old and a Catholic orphan. He knows how the neighborhood is and just didn't want these thugs to have it their way. As he disappears from eyesight, the woman takes off her mask. Beautiful, young woman with bright eyes was standing there. Backstory, she lives with her cousins. These two kids who were in trouble seems like were her cousins. They always used to ask her or force her to not stay at home every single time and go out and make some friends they used to prepare a board and write down things to do to make good friends like join clubs and go to aunt. Spend time on campus. Looks like she was struggling and making friends maybe because she was introvert. Or shy. Scene change. People gathered around. Police siren ringing. Cars going and coming. Crowd murmuring among themselves. People panicking. There was a dead body lying down there. One said it was a vampire. Another says she was bitten by a vampire. Police trying to move people and not make the things difficult for police. Ambulance siren going and coming. The side stops the bus in which Nuna was sitting. People inside bus also started talking about the situation thinking and worrying about how they're gonna live in such a tremendous situation. On a smart TV inside the bus, the news anchor started questioning like from where these vampires come from are they genetic evolution where they already existed but was hidden from public. He ended his news with saying they live among us and reveal their true color at night. Listening to which Nuna was worried and she kissed the cross on her neck. Seen from Nuna's campus party, it was a very happening crowd mixed with young boys and girls asking for drinks checking on their order from restaurant and whatnot. Gossiping among each other what they gonna do this weekend and meanwhile Nuna was sitting alone thinking that it's been two hours in drinking game and she has not made a single conversation with anyone. Then she decided to just keep drinking after all only that thing is gonna help her today. She drank a lot and beside her there was a competition of who will drink more at Jang's table people were confused looking at his body that is he really a colleague. Is he even Korean? Loser had to participate in talent show and looking at that beast drinking so much people decided it's better to just participate in the competition rather than dying as a drunkard. But little did they know Nuna was prepared for something else luckily she drank way more than him so much more that just by looking at the bottles Jang collapsed down. Suddenly the introvert with no friend Nuna was everybody's favorite. People started gathering around her one said hey your name is Hayan right? She agreed. So the masked girl Nuna's real name was Hayan. People started exchanging numbers with her after all she saved everyone from the competition. They started chit-chatting about college and their assumptions about Hayan. Suddenly Siren ran and everybody started worrying to go home because on news it was announced to not stay outside their house after the siren as the siren was the warning for the citizens. The happening party turned worrisome and everybody started moving to their home. 
Everybody was worried, come on. Vampires roaming around in the town was a worrisome situation. While Hayen was walking a voice came from behind asking Hayen let me take you home. A guy from Hayen's college handsome and tall Hayen was nervous because it was her first time someone's asking her to drop home and that too son be nim as per Hayen's friends he was bit popular in the college and Hayen was confused why was he being so nice to her they started moving forward and talking with each other about the danger while son be nim acted tough that what is so serious about this and laughed off. People were running towards their home in order to reach home safely while this situation going on in the town. Hayen and Sunbi Nim were having conversations about their places whom they live with. People running around asking the bus driver to wait as it was the last bus. Hayen advised Nim to go home as this was very late. Suddenly they hear a sound from a distance two men were fighting one was on the ground and the other one was just standing tall clearly he was at an advantage he was asking for his borrowed money. Suddenly Hayen realized that he was the thug from that day. The gangster who came looking for the priest. That gangster man held that guy and swing his hand saying I'll kill you today. Hayen and Nim were looking from a distance worried about the poor man. But then the situation changed Hayen and Nim's face were changed because the man who was lying down stabbed that gangster's stomach with his bare hands. What happened just now? They couldn't believe what they saw just now. The poor man turned out to be a vampire. He slowly moved closer to gangster's ear and asked him smiling didn't I tell you to go away? Hayen was scared but more than her Nim was scared so scared that he ran away in the opposite direction crying like a four-year-old baby mommy mommy. To this Hayen asked him didn't you say this wasn't a big deal. But he ran so fast that he disappeared in a moment. The vampire started moving towards Hayen. Hayen was terrified but she was trying to calm her down and started looking for something in her bag which father gave her. The vampire asked what are you looking for? A cross, garlic, those things are useless against us. But Hayen was still searching for something she gave up after a while regretting how could she miss that at home. She shouted for help here and there but what was left was Hayen, vampire and a wall behind Hayen with nowhere to run. She started crying asking for mercy. She started begging the vampire to not to do this. Vampire on the other hand seemed very calm and slowly moving towards Hayen making conversations like don't worry we were all once human like you. And saying this he punched a wall beside him and the wall was broken into pieces dust all over. Looking at his red shiny eyes and long teeth Hayen was terrified. He called his power a blessing and he wanted to give this blessing to Hayen as well. He moved to attack Hayen with his teeth. She shouted. He grabbed her hair and as he was moving forward something strange happened. A hand pierced through the vampire's head. A strange feeling was spread in the atmosphere. Not again. I told you to stay away said Hayen. Long teeth and red eyes but this time it was no one else but Hayen. I was born vampire said Hayen standing with blood in her hand after she killed the vampire. Night fell on the town, the moon casting a silver glow amidst swirling mist. Suddenly, a swoosh cut through the air, it was none other than Hayen rushing towards her home. She landed in front of her door and settled herself. As she entered her room, she started searching for something. Inside a cloth basket was a crown-like object made of thorns. She wore it on her head and relaxed for a bit thinking how clumsy she is. It looks like this crown of thorns makes her come back to her normal senses. While she was returning to her senses, she was thinking about how tough it is to live among humans and hide her appearance. Next day, Professor Park Dongju placed a can of energy drink on Hayen's desk while she was studying. He praised her for her dedication towards her studies with a smile on his face and a jolly nature. Then, he turned around and walked to other students who seemed to have a doubt about a topic. Hayen's friend told her that he's a new professor who just graduated from our major. Everybody seemed to like this professor as he worked his way up to this place being raised by a single mom and working three different jobs. Everybody thought of him as an inspiration. Also, he was going to be a dad next month. After class, when Hayen and her friends were walking around the campus, students started asking Hayen about her situation after bumping into a vampire. They criticized the person who left her and ran away, calling him a bastard. Hayen tried to ignore the topic, saying it's all fine as she was also able to run off the situation and save herself. Her friends started talking about the situation again as this vampire thing was the hottest topic in town. They were calculating that for every 10,000 people, there's one vampire. The friend who said this was shocked at her own statement. As what happened last night, this conversation was definitely uncomfortable for Hayen. But it wasn't in Hayen's control to make all these people stop talking. Everyone around her was gossiping about the same thing. From a distance, they heard a student saying how cruel it is to live like this and how they wished that these vampires should die. Listening to this, Hayen was lost in her own thoughts. It seemed like it triggered a past memory of Hayen. 
From the time of her childhood, picture books were her friends. She used to be alone all the time. Seeing other children making plans of meeting or playing together would hurt Hayen even more because all she had was loneliness and picture books. She wished that someday she'll meet someone who'll be her friend and with whom she can share her daily things. Then was the time she met him. A boy holding a picture book in his hand asked Hayen if she could read these books. Soon they were talking about their whereabouts. The new boy got to know from children around that she didn't go to school. Hayen felt now even he'll treat her the same as everyone else does. However, he was different, he didn't judge Hayen on any basis. He was the best friend Hayen was looking for. They planned to bunk school and go to the library so that they can read more picture books and spend more time together. They started meeting daily and talking about everything. He used to share his daily chores, what happened in school, everything with Hayen. And Hayen used to listen carefully as she found the friend she was longing for. She used to forget about her being a vampire. She was happy after a long time. Time passed, but then fate decided something else for Hayen. One day, her friend was beaten up by some thugs outside of school. The boy's name was Appa. Hayen badly wanted to help Appa. Once when Appa was surrounded by those brats again and they were trying to hit him, suddenly Hayen came from nowhere and punched a wall so hard that it broke into pieces. Everyone was scared, but Appa was scared the most. He couldn't believe what he just saw. Hayen looked at Appa with a smile and asked him if he was fine. But the look on Appa's face said something else. He was terrified by Hayen's teeth and her monstrous power. He forgot all the things they had in the past and started begging for his life. Hayen was stuck in her thoughts. She saw her dream life crashing down in front of her eyes. Hayen, Hayen, said her friends while she was lost in the past. She came back to the present and smiled at everyone. Suddenly, she got hit by a guy while walking and the guy blamed it on Hayen, asking her to keep her eyes on the way. This arrogant guy was the major's fossil. He was infamous and the biggest psycho in college. He created trouble for everyone, fighting, arguing, and whatnot. Hayen got a different vibe from that person. He looked ill, as if he was suffering from a disease. Hayen had a different look in her eyes, as if she knew something. He snatched a bucket of water from the watchman and drank it all, but he was still thirsty. He met some people on his way who asked him if he still was in college. To him, it was like they were laughing at his situation, which made him look like a total fool. People started moving towards their houses as it was late. Sunbeam started talking to himself about how he was a failure in life, how people of his age were doing everything nice in life and there he was not even graduated yet. But he changed his perspective about all of these thoughts after looking in the mirror, eyes red and long teeth which he calls as a bomb gift. He was a vampire, sirens rang all over the place, and the professor ran towards his car on which Sunbi Nim was looking at. As they were in the same class, Nimble got a bit jealous of how he already made something of himself and he was rich, a professor in the college, driving a nice car, and whatnot. The professor greeted him in a hurry as he was already late to reach home. He didn't want to get caught by a vampire. Little did he know, while Sunbi Nim was thinking about how everyone was ahead of him and was sure that he bribed his way up. He heard a honk from the professor's car. The professor politely asked him to leave the way, but the arrogance and jealousy inside him made him hear demeaning words like will you go hide in the corner? We don't want to see your pathetic ass. Again, the words of people in his mind started revolving. It was a mess in his mind. Bam, he turned the car upside down. He was ready to kill the professor. He was happy with all the power he has now. He was happy with this new life. He killed the professor. The students next day in the college got to know that the professor was killed and Sunbi killed him. It was surprising for them to believe that someone could kill a person like a professor. Sunbi was all over the news. A message came on everybody's mobile phone that a meeting would be conducted in the building. There was a meeting for all the students now. Students started moving towards the meeting room, discussing why they kept meeting so late. And will they allow them to leave early? Hayen called a friend. Let's go. Asked her to join while Hayen was standing next to the cupboard. She left for the meeting as well. In the cupboard was the vampire Sunbi who killed the professor. The vampire, who was hiding in the cupboard, was thinking about all the bad things that had happened to him in the past. Did he really deserve that? Was being unemployed this bad? At last, he found the solution to all his problems, just killing everyone. The power was all over his head. He heard the news of the meeting and decided to kill everyone in the room. With the will of killing each and every student, he started moving towards the meeting room. In the meeting room, students were discussing among each other regarding the situation going on in the city. Hayen was missing from the room. Her friends were curious where she was. The vampire slammed the door of the meeting room. What he saw was something different. The room was empty. It looked like somebody fooled him. Even the students were confused regarding this change. The professor also didn't know who changed the room. 
The vampire then saw Hayen standing in front of him with a mask on her face. She asked him the reason why he killed the professor. Seems like Hayen was there to take revenge for the professor's death. The vampire started giving silly reasons for killing the professor, which made Hayen even more angry. Hayen, being a vampire herself, didn't like the way he was going. Hayen asked him to turn himself in and compensate the professor's family. Swoosh. The vampire swung his hand at Hayen's stomach. He was happy about his powers and more confident. However, soon he found out that Hayen was standing behind him, and he couldn't even hit her. Soon the vampire got to know that Hayen was also a vampire. Depending upon the size of Hayen's body, the vampire was very much confident in himself and his powers. He insisted Hayen to remove the mask. He started asking questions like, how do you even study with these students? Uh, you'll be done if someone sees your true identity. Hayen cleared his misconception that the mask she was wearing was for his own benefit. Because if he saw her face, Hayen had to kill him. He punched Hayen and started explaining how vampire bodies work. They get stronger twice or thrice when they drink blood. Sitting at a party, a few men cornered him and passed a statement that he looks fine and then passed him their hands full of blood to drink. They told him once he drank this he was going to live a different life. In his mind, that was much better than the life he was living. Seems like some gang was involved in this and they were making humans vampire. And people who were hungry for power were falling for it. Sunbi Nim was one of them. He killed many people. Even the people who offered him the blood were amazed. Suddenly, Hayan stood up in front of him, and he was shocked as he felt the punch but Hayan was not even scratched. Looking down at his hand, he was terrified as it was his own hands which were broken. He started shouting like a kid. Watching him in pain, Hayan asked him how could he kill his friend. His answer was, jealousy. He started crying about how he only had one friend and that was also killed by himself. Meanwhile, he was taking time to regenerate. He jumped and went to hit Hayan. Hayan smiled at his actions, looking down at him. She mentioned how he will always be nothing more than trash as he always misses the opportunities given to him. Hayan revealed her face. When he was trying to hit Hayan, she held him and twisted him and slammed him on the ground. Looking at her, he realized something that those men warned him about. These men who offered him the blood advised him that whenever he meets a lion, make sure to shut up and kiss the ground. They ignored the conversation saying anyway you won't meet any and even if you meet them you're as good as dead. Upon asking who, they replied, the white-haired vampire. <clears throat> Hayen held him in her hand and jumped out of the window. Now he was ready to compensate. However, Hayen made up her mind that his compensation would be completed by his death. The next morning, at the site of the incident where Nim was killed, police were investigating. Photographers were snapping pictures of the scene. However, the place was in shambles, walls were broken, and Nim's body was reduced to dust. A senior police officer was irritated and scolding his juniors for making him come alone for such a case. He wore an expensive branded wristwatch. The junior offered an apology, after which the police officer turned his attention to another junior, a girl, and proceeded to reprimand her too. There were no CCTV cameras in the area, nor did any vehicle have a black box from which they could extract videos. Two alibis were found, as CCTV near their homes captured them heading inside during the time of the incident. However, the distance between their houses was more than 20 minutes, so they were ruled out as having alibis. The senior police officer again started scolding the junior girl. While this was happening, a sound came from behind, asking, any blood? Standing behind was the red-haired man who had appeared before, named H. Wang Yunt, surprisingly a team leader. The senior police officer seemed annoyed at H. Wang and advised him to focus on his own cases. H. Wang noticed the expensive watch and started interrogating about its cost and how it was afforded. He also noticed the faint scent of cologne, which detectives typically don't wear, emanating from the watch. The time on the watch was also wrong, set to the time zone for Russia. H. Wang also remarked, didn't a black market drug dealer just get out of prison and was sent back to his country? I didn't know there were people tacky enough to receive watches these days. Listening to this, the senior police officer was shocked. The juniors were pleased with H. Wang, as he was intelligent and impressive. He was the only one who could handle the strict senior officer. H. Wang had a memory like a genius and a record of arresting vampires that exceeded 80% after vampire countermeasures started. He had won several gold and national medals. People used to call him the vampire hunting ghost. H. Wang started investigating the place. One of the policemen suggested that it seemed like there was a fight between both of them, to which H. Wang responded, it was not just a fight. It was a one-sided fight with no chance of survival for the victim. He assumed this wasn't just a normal vampire. People in the town were more worried now, as incidents were happening day by day. College students were particularly concerned. 
with a speaker in their hand, they expressed their anger towards the school for not taking any action against these incidents. Hayen and her friends also agreed with this as they walked ahead. Suddenly, a sound came from behind, excuse me. H. Wang was standing behind, waving his hands towards Hayen. Hayen's friends were shocked that such a handsome and strong man was calling Hayen. They started asking Hayen if they were dating. More than them, Hayen was shocked, as she remembered him from the time when gangsters were searching for the priest. After a while, Each Wang and Hayen started walking together as Hayen's friends had already left. Hayen's mind was constantly thinking about why he was here and what he wanted from her. I want to take care of you, said H. Wang. As this incident was so dangerous, you might be frightened, he continued. Hayen felt like he was reading her mind. They started having a conversation and decided to go and eat something. Hayen was curious and asked what they do with vampires after they catch them. H. Wang said that first, they control them with electrical wire to restrict their movement, and then they throw them into a furnace that reaches over 2,000 degrees Celsius. Hayen was frightened by H. Wang's words. She asked him if he hated vampires a lot. He said he just wanted to bring back the good old days and get rid of all the vampires. They reached the restaurant, and H. Wang ordered a pork stew. H. Wang was happy to see many other pork dishes on the menu. On the other hand, Hayen looked very uncomfortable. Suddenly, H. Wang got a deep cut on his hand, and it started bleeding. Suddenly, Hayen realized that he was testing her, as he knew vampires couldn't eat normal food, and was testing her control by showing her blood. Hayen put her hand in her bag and grabbed the thorn crown to calm herself a bit. He asked her to start eating, is it not appetizing? What's wrong? He came closer to Hayen and slowly said, Or are you a person who can't eat things like this? I am very curious to know if she is going to eat or not, and whether she will become the prime suspect, or H. Wang will find out about her true identity. Let's see in the next video. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.